And welcome back, everybody. This is Macronutrients 4, I guess, uh, deficiencies and what to do about them. So this is macronutrient deficiencies and how we can address them nutritionally. So remember back here, this is the malnutrition diagnostic tool. And remember that the macronutrient deficiencies were broken into, and specifically this is mostly energy deficiency, but not completely. This is broken into three parts. So we have acute disease or injury related, chronic disease related, and starvation related. And the way that we determine that is based on their uh, inflammation level. All right. So we're going to start with uh, starvation related. And I'm going to apologize up front because not a lot about this is fun. Um, this is kind of a bummer part. Sorry. Uh, so we'll start with starvation related, which is obviously caused by uh, lack of nutrients in the diet. Some examples of this are anorexia nervosa, marasmus, and kwashiorkor. Um, I typically today I don't see this. I don't see someone wrote uh, patient suffers from marasmus. Uh, it's usually just protein calorie malnutrition, and that's as far as they go. I've seen marasmus once noted as a diagnosis. Uh, and that was with a brand new uh, physician's assistant. And I think she was just excited to be able to use this knowledge she had on somebody. She's like, oh, I know I know what that is. I know what it is. And, and so she wrote it down. Normally, you're going to see PCM. Okay. Uh, sidebar here on anorexia nervosa. Because this comes up a lot. Um, not anorexia nervosa itself. Give me a sec. So anorexia nervosa is a body dysmorphic disorder. It uh, presents with a severe fear of weight gain, and the patient equates thinness with worthiness. And the reason I want to know this is, is twofold. Uh, one is that anorexia is a descriptor you're going to see in a lot of malnutrition, and it's going to show up in elder care. Anorexia, just the term anorexia, simply means a lack of appetite. Okay, so when you see something described, anorexia just means that this person has no appetite. Anorexia nervosa is a condition. Okay, anorexia, no appetite. Anorexia nervosa, condition. So, because that's going forward, this will be important. Okay? Ah, uh, almost as though I knew what the next one was. So, Anorexia, anorexia, excuse me, I almost did it myself. Uh, geriatric patients can have eating disorders. Um, going back to that previous slide, that is true. Uh, older patients can have anorexia nervosa. They can have bulimia. They can have binge eating disorder. Uh, we know it exists. We do not have a good grasp of the scope of it. At the moment, it's just assumed to be reflective of the general population. But remember that geriatric patients do have more mental health issues and more risks than the general population. So it may be that it's, it presents more in geriatric patients as well. We don't know at the moment. There's also a term, uh, anorexia of aging, which is just that, or describes that, as people age, their appetite diminishes. Um, again, this is one of those issues that's very chicken and egg. We don't know if the uh, morphologic changes of aging cause a decrease in appetite or if the decrease in appetite is a separate issue which then contributes to the morphological changes or if it's both of those things. I, we don't have a way to determine that at this point. Okay, Marasmus, we're going to go through these just to see what to remind you, a refresher here, what does it, what do each one, what do each one mean? No, no, that's bad English. What does each one mean? Uh, and how, well, how does it relate to geriatrics? So marasmus is uh, traditional, just not getting enough to eat. It's insufficient protein and uh, kilocalories. The signs and symptoms of this are marked loss of adipose tissue, uh, loose skin folds over what should be fatty areas, and a general skeletal de appearance, a de deprived appearance. They look very depleted. Kwashiorkor, and again, I apologize for these pictures. I, there are limited numbers of 
demonstrable pictures of these conditions. Uh, Kwashiorkor uh, translates from, or Kwashiorkor is a term that translates into sickness the baby gets when the new baby comes. And I mention that because it's how it helped me remember it early on. It's sufficient kilocalorie intake, insufficient protein. And the way this was discovered by doctors there were, or what caused it, the normal case study, I guess you'd say, was a mother that was breastfeeding, a new baby was born, the older child was put on cereal, and the new baby was breastfed. After the new child was put on cereal, that's when quashier course symptoms would um, signs would present. So it's enough energy, enough calories going in, not enough protein being provided. Uh, this presents with as ascites, um, alopecia, so the loss of hair, uh, and uh, hepatomegaly with fatty infiltrates, which they always list as a common sign, but uh, you're not obviously going to see that. We're going to talk very quickly about here refeeding syndrome. Remember, refeeding syndrome is a potentially fatal lack of micronutrients in a patient that has starved uh, and begun to eat again. And it's when food is presented too quickly back, or too much food is presented too quickly to them. So, what's going on? During fasting, uh, the body uses amino acids and adipose tissue for fuel instead of carbohydrates. When that happens, insulin is suppressed and glucagon is expressed. So the insulin has gone down because there's nothing to, uh, there's no insulin to be put away. Uh, insulin, no, sorry. There's no glucose to be put away, nothing to be stored, nothing to be processed. Glucagon is presented so the body can generate glucose itself. When carbohydrates are reintroduced, insulin is released and the metabolic rate increases what happens is that there are already limited stores of potassium, magnesium, and phosphorus in the body. All of these, remember your um, TCA cycle, glycolysis, all of those are necessary metabolites in the energy cycle of the body. So what happens is that the body just runs out of those materials. There are not too many carbohydrates, not enough metabolites to let the process actually continue. So if you are, the goals here for uh, somebody who is, has been starved is a gradual reintroduction of kilocalories and proteins to match needs. Your goal rate is about 25 to 30 grams per kilogram. And that's true across the board for everyone. Um, that's the goal rate when you have an uh, elder that has starvation related malnutrition. Uh, is that is the goal rate at the beginning. And then we taper them back once they can handle it to a standard Mifflin St. Jor established rate. Um, it's very, very important when you're having someone who has been uh, depleted that you're providing the RDA of micronutrients. If they're doing PO nutrition, I always consider a multivitamin. I don't actually say I consider, I, I always add one. I know there's some disagreement on whether or not multivitamins are beneficial as kind of a prophylactic, but it's, I feel better about it than not do, using it and support wound healing if needed. So the eventual, eventual goal rate may need to be higher than 25 to 30 and they may have wounds, but we have to build up slowly to get them safely back to that point. Okay. Chronic disease related. So we moved from the first category. Remember there's no inflammation. Now there's some inflammation. This is related to, this is a disease state, I'm sorry, this is a malnourished state caused by an underlying disease of some sort, long-term disease. Uh, organ failure, metabolic disorder, an autoimmune disorder. It can be an inflammatory disorder, uh, and sarcopenia, which gets its own little tag there. It's important to note that while you do need to respond to the nutrition needs of a person with chronic related malnutrition, they're not going to, you're not going to see a lot of beneficial forward motion until the underlying pathology is resolved. So you still need to meet those needs, but you're not going to see results from meeting those needs until the pathology is resolved. One of the things that presents here, so we're not going to break down into, uh, you know, th this is 
kidney disease related malnutrition. This is age related malnutrition. We're just these are the what you will see with someone with malnutrition. Okay, so uh, cachexia is a, it's Greek for bad condition, which I just find a very strange term. It's always caused by an underlying pathology. Typically, you'll see this in somebody with cancer, with um, maybe with end stage renal disease, and they're on dialysis. Uh, occasionally, it can present in elders with somebody who has had a very, very bad uh, injury, a hip break, a long bone break, something like that. The uh, signs and symptoms of this are loss of lean body mass and eventual loss of fatty tissue and anorexia. So remember, while they are depleting due to an increased need from whatever underlying condition they have, they also had to have no appetite. And you will see this a lot in these wasting states like this, that one of the things that happens is they lose their appetite. And again, we're talking about elder population. So this is on top of, and they have potentially anorexia from aging. Cachexia anorexia syndrome is a hypothesized interconnectedness. So again, we're talking about one of those anorexia of aging. This is the cachexia anorexia syndrome hypothesis. It's that cachexia causes loss of lean body mass and adipocytes. This leads to a reduced uh, basal metabolic rate. Because of that reduced basal metabolic rate, they lose their interest in eating. They're not feeling as hungry because they're not using as many calories. This leads to reduced intake, 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 and this reduced intake furthers the cachexia. Um, it can be medicated to some degree with uh, megase or mirtazapine. Uh, if you're not familiar with those, mirtazapine is also Remeron. It's uh, actually an antidepressant that's given to people. It has a, <laughs> excuse me, let me back up. It has a beneficial side effect that it stimulates appetite and it's extremely good for people with depression or anxiety whose depression or anxiety causes them to lose their appetite. Uh, it is also sometimes used for uh, hospice care to stimulate appetite for people. Magesterol or megase was a, or is a, it exists, is a drug that was specifically engineered to stimulate appetite in people with uh, age-related cachexia initially. It's often given to uh, cancer patients as well. So mirtazapine, magesterol, uh, those are two appetite-stimulating medications you may see. Right, sarco uh, sarcopenia. I'm, boy, I'm having a trouble today. Sarcopenia is deterioration and loss of lean body mass. It can be related to, remember, it can be related to aging. Uh, it also, it can be related to inactivity, cr uh, chronic inflammation like rheumatoid arthritis or metabolic syndrome. It leads to an increased risk of fractures because, remember, uh, the, they're losing lean body mass, so they don't have that cushioning in case of a fall. It also can lead to decreased glycemic control because your lean body mass is a sponge and it leads to just increased morbidity and actually mortality as well. Your lean body mass is a protective barrier for you in many, many ways. Loss of lean body mass is always a bad sign. Uh, we touched on this in the last one about protein, muscle atrophy and exercise. You cannot rebuild lean body mass just through nutritional supplementation. It won't work. You have to challenge the body as well. And we, we know this, right? Because if all it took was extra protein and calories, we would all be slamming T-bone steaks and looking fabulous. But it doesn't work that way. You have to challenge the body. It will rise to the level it's demanded. Or um, as therapists often will say, if you don't use it, you lose it. So nutritional supplementation can absolutely help but nutritional supplementation by itself has some limited mixed results. Nutritional supplementation and exercise is far more effective in stopping wasting conditions. So the MNT for uh, wasting conditions is to provide MNT support uh, of the condition, both of the wasting condition itself and of whatever underlying issue it is. Remember, if you have someone with cancer, they have an extremely catabolic system, they need extra nutritional support. 
provide macronutrients to support the lean body mass and protect it as much as possible. And be prepared to adjust things as necessary to respond to changes. This isn't just a once, you know, make a nutrition prescription and then you're done. I don't know. These things are dynamic. They change. And you need to be monitoring the patient to see what what they are presenting you with. Uh, the last one is acute disease or injury related. This is a conditional malnutrition. It's related to increased stress. So it's not so much that they weren't eating enough before or that their intake is bad so much as their needs have suddenly shot through the roof. And they're just conditionally malnourished up until their basal metabolic rate comes back down to what it normally is. These are things like major infections, burns, trauma. Uh, the body needs more energy and proteins for repair. This, often, this is often accompanied by uh, inflammation, fever, high metabolic rate. We're looking at a CRP of over 2. So what's the, uh, what's the MIT for this? Is honestly, j just go. <laughs> just go as hard as you can. Um, you know, when you're talking to them, like, why, why are you talking to me? You could be using that mouth for eating right now. Why, why are you doing something else? Uh, the metabolic needs just are increased to meet repair needs. For most adults, this range falls to 30 to 35 calories per kilogram. That's the recommended wound healing rate. Uh, protein can be as high as 1.5 grams per kilogram if you compare again to 0.8 to 1. So we're talking uh, a third to almost a half again as much as they normally need. And remember that elders can have energy needs as high as 40 kilo la 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 calories per kilogram so they can actually go above and beyond where we would even go for most people and a lot of this is just depends on you know, how are they responding to what you're doing remember diagnosing malnutrition there is no single marker to identify it you have to piece this together from multiple data points now obviously if you have somebody come in who's extremely depleted you can say i they clearly have some protein calorie malnutrition. If you have a person come in with two femur breaks, they obviously are acutely malnourished, but you need to build your case for these things. The uh, nutrition focused physical examination is always important. Biochemical markers can help and remember to check what their intake is. So your clinical goals in all of these, really in every case, is to provide sufficient nutrients to them for whatever the condition is, to maintain their lean body mass. You want to protect it as much as possible. There's limited things that food can do to build lean body mass, but it can protect lean body mass. And that's almost our primary goal is to protect body weight and lean body mass and to help normalize metabolic function as much as possible. So just to recap, what is malnutrition? It's a state in which the body is not getting enough nutrients, of either not the right nutrients or not the right amount of them. Uh, it can be acute, chronic, or disease-related, or a long-term depletion. It's based on the body's reaction to diseases and injury states. Or it, it is, yeah, that, we'll, we'll go with that. Um, and the elderly are at risk of starvation-related and chronic disease-related especially, uh, again, remember how many comorbidities and how many risk factors the elderly have. I would argue that everybody's roughly at the same amount of risk for an acute uh, injury-related malnutrition because it's either you have an injury or you don't. But the other two, the elders, yeah, elderly are much more at risk. Um, sorry the English was hard on this one. I will catch you guys next time for micronutrients. Until then, have a good one. I'll see you later. Bye.